So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Joe Flick with the Montana State Library. I'm your CE coordinator, and Jim Camera is joining me this afternoon at our Getting to Know You series. This is episode number three. Jim's our um, government information librarian, and that means he knows everything that you might need to know and share with the researchers that might come to your library. So he's going to kind of introduce himself, talk about a little bit about where to find research research resources that he manages for the state library and part of the series is just that you kind of that you literally do get to know the staff at the state library so you feel comfortable contacting any of us anytime that you need to and so with that Jim I'm just gonna turn things on over to you and stop my screen sharing okay so you should see an opportunity to share your screen now okay just one moment. And I'll be here to monitor the chat box if anybody has any questions or comments. Okay, we see your screen. Take it okay. away, Jim. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I'm happy to address any questions. You can put them in the chat. Uh, I'm, talk maybe 15, 20 minutes, and then just kind of open it up to whatever questions you might have. Beginning here at the Montana State Library homepage, um, I am the government information librarian, and my job is to work with state agencies uh, in Montana and public libraries, public librarians like yourself to identify, collect, and provide permanent public access to state government information that's intended for public distribution. And, uh, you know, historically that has meant print publications. And so we have a large print collection that we have digitized. I'll be showing you that shortly. And then also we have been collecting state agency websites uh, since 1996. Um, and I'll show you that. So there's, those are the two big collections. Uh, the digitized collection, and then this collection of state government websites. And a couple of years ago, we kind of expanded our collection development scope to also include, and this is where I'm going to be asking for your help going forward, uh, to also include uh, county government, local municipal government, tribal government, school districts, public libraries, and special districts. Um, and so we've begun to collect uh, those websites on a monthly basis. And I will show you that. And again, ask for your assistance in collecting that. Any feedback? Jim, I think you may have muted yourself inadvertently. We're not hearing you. Anyone else here, Jim? Hello? Anyway, uh, so the Wayback Machine, uh, I'll just highlight there. It shows that there's 616 billion web pages on the internet that have been collected here. And Montana is contributing to this collection. We're part of that 616 billion web pages. Um, I'll show you that in just a moment. Um, and then we're also adding to this book collection. So these are the different collections at the Internet Archive. They collect websites, they collect books, video, audio, software, and images. At your leisure, I would encourage you to browse, peruse these different huge, huge archives uh, just for um, possibilities for your own library or your own personal interests or hobbies. Um, and so the subtle second collection is uh, the book collection, and there's about 33 million books that have been digitized, and we have added a lot of Montana State government publications here, and that's where you'll find them. Um, and as far as access to these collections, you can either come to our homepage here and uh, search on digitized state publications right here, 
Um, and if you do that, um, and also if you're a member of the Montana Shared Catalog, um, your catalog page, I just randomly chose Blaine County Library, uh, should have links to the State Library digital publications collection, and then also our collection of state agency websites. Uh, so beginning here with this um, digital publications, if you click on that, um, it opens up to this page. Uh, I don't really like the frame here. It's within kind of the Montana shared catalog. Uh, so what I would encourage you to do is if you could just go here to state publication collect collection, and open a new open link in a new tab. And when you do that, you'll get the wider perspective. And so you can see here, we've digitized about 20, a little over 27,000 state publications. And these um, range from the territorial days of Montana um, and to, to about 1996. Um, and you can sort here, a sort on date published, and you can see these go back to 1864 all the way to uh, present day. And the thumbnail is a good view because the covers can give you a lot of information. Sometimes it's more, it's easier to search um, or to use the list view over here. And so you can toggle back and forth list or thumbnail, okay? And um, and then on the search box, well, let's, um, there's a couple ways to search. You can search on the metadata and that would include like the date, uh, the publisher, the creator, the title, the author. Um, and so I'll, I'll show you, a a series that we recently digitized, Montana Outdoors. It's published by the uh, um, FWP, Fish, Wildlife and Parks, pardon me. Sorry about the acronym. Anyway, here are their historic publications dating back to the 1950s. I think I can go even back further to the 30s. Um, these are the more recent issues. Uh, yeah, so anyway, this is just one of a number of series uh, that I think you'd find uh, interesting to, to search. And if you wanna look at a particular issue, I just wanna draw your attention to some features that are, I think are pretty cool. Montana Outdoors, you click on that issue um, and it brings you to the flip book. Um, issue and you can just click on the pages and they turn. Um, you have down here, if you need to magnify or adjust the, the size of the font, you can do that. Some, and I would also call your attention to this little icon here, the thumbnail view. And if you're needing to browse through a, a publication for like images or maps or graphs, this is a really good way to kind of quickly look through uh, a bunch of pages all at once. Um, and some of this is going to be review for, for those of you that are familiar with uh, the Internet Archive and publications. Um, also, here in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see this icon here for reading the book aloud. If you were to click on that, I would take you to an MP3 file and it would, with a computer voice, kind of start reading the entire publication. Um, that can be useful for patrons that are low vision or no vision or have some who cannot read like uh, those of us that have all our all our facilities or senses um, and so that's down here um, you can also search within the publication here using this search icon um, and what i like about this is searching on the word fish for example uh, you'll get back all the instances of where the word fish appears. And there's these little uh, markers at the bottom of the page. And if you click on any of these, 
it'll take you right to that page uh, and highlight um, that instance of the word fish. Um, so I think that's pretty handy. Um, so that's typically how you're going to be searching is using the metadata search. You could also use, um, let me go back. You could also click on this radio button called text contents. And what this does is allows you to do a full text search across all 27,000 publications. And um, it's gonna get you back quite a bit of results, but it's useful if you're, for example, doing some genealogy on your family name and you wanna see where your relatives or ancestors might have somehow appeared in state government information, at least that which was digitized and formerly in print. Uh, I was curious about my mother. Um, her maiden name was Mendoza, so I typed in Mendoza and got back a bunch of results. Um, I knew that she was a nurse in her career. Uh, and so here very quickly, I can see where her name is appearing in these publications. And if I click on the publication, I can get right to her name. Um, but also for contemporary topics, you know, if you were wanting to do some research on vaccines or uh, coal mining or, um, I don't know. Uh, but for geology, genealogy, it can be very, very useful uh, to discovering new relatives that you didn't know that you had. Um, what else would I like to bring your attention to? Um, and I know many of you at the public libraries are also at like a county library. And um, uh, you know, you could either do a metadata or a text content search. Um, and, you know, if you wanted to search on, you know, what are the publications among these 27,000 that have to do with your uh, county? You could type on, for example, like Gra Granite County. Um, and, and you can see there's quite a bit there. There's you know, 1500 search results. Um, and so this could be pretty useful for your um, your patrons. And then if you wanted to do some, it's broken out by facets, by year, by topic, uh, by creator in the left, left navigation here. Um, what, what else can I tell you? Um, okay. Um, and an idea that I've had recently, like I said, there's, you know, I'm primarily responsible for collecting and identifying state government information that's been published uh, in print uh, and also on the web. Um, but there is more and more every day, there's a greater interagency and intergovernment uh, connection and relationship between uh, state government and county government and local government. And uh, um, and so I'm wanting to start adding county and municipal documents to uh, want to start collecting them and digitizing them. And I know at your library, you might have some old city county documents that are old and aging and should you ever think about getting rid of them just because they're in very poor condition or they're not getting much use or you have duplicate copies please 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 contact me and i would love to get my hands on them because i would like to build um, uh, another collection um, that would have the city county uh, documents and it just really opens up research possibilities so um, anyway please contact me if you are at all interested in that or have any questions about that um, and i could digitize that stuff at no cost to you if you wanted those documents back 
Uh, I think I could even do that um, in the same condition. Okay, so that is uh, the print collection that we have digitized. I next want to turn your attention to um, our collection at state agency websites. And the name of the collection, it's not the best name, but it's the name we have, mt.gov connect. I wish it were a little bit more descriptive, uh, but anyway, you can search here. And as I said before, if you're in the MSC, or even if you're not in the MSC, you could provide somewhere from your um, uh, um, web library website, a link to it, and it's called mt.gov. So by clicking on that again, I'd open a new tab. Ah, oh darn it, we're still in this. Let me let me get out of that. Um, thank you for your patience. Um, So here is mt.gov. It's a collection of state agency websites dating back to 1996. Um, right now, uh, I just went in and looked in on the administrative site. And to give you some idea of the, the, the size of this collection, there's 289 million pages or documents in this collection right now. And it dates back to just 1996. Um, and so we're adding tens of thousands of pages to this every month with every capture. Um, and, uh, and you can do a keyword search. If you're familiar with the organization of state government, you could also search on a particular state agency. Um, and in addition to mt.gov connect, as I said before, um, we, a couple of years ago, started this collection called MT County Connect. And I don't know if you can read this, but it speaks to the interrelationships and the cooperation between state government and uh, other governments here in Montana. And so this is, uh, a collection of county government websites, public library websites, public school districts, towns, and tribal government. And if you click on any of these, let's just start with county government. And uh, here are the creators, contributors, and you should see your county listed there. And if you don't, <laughs> please contact me. Um, and so every month um, we're adding to this collection, we're capturing uh, your county websites and your public library websites. Um, so going out to um, uh, say Beaverhead County, um, click on that. You can see the dates of capture of when we've captured Beaverhead County. Um, and going back. So that's for the county government. You click out of that, maybe you're interested to see whether or not um, we're capturing your public library website. Click on public libraries here. And you should see your library listed here. Um, and if for some reason it's not capturing correctly or displaying, please contact me, let me know. Uh, going out to Madison County Public Library, click on that. Um, and you can see all the times, let's click on that. And as I said, we just started collecting back in 2019. Um, and that's where the collection really starts to take off. And if you click on any of these, um, it goes, to that website that's been collected, uh, this yellow banner up here makes it very clear that it's not a live page, that it's been archived. You can also see here in the web address the date when it was captured, the date, uh, month, uh, 
year, uh, the seconds that it was counted, captured. Um, anyway, um, I would really, really, really appreciate your help in making sure that this is accurate, complete, and up to date. Uh, of particular interest, I think, to a lot of uh, folks, uh, our patrons are uh, like meeting minutes and meeting agendas, and that uh, we're capturing this every month, every every month. Um, and let's see, I think I'm gonna stop here for now. Again, um, all this that you see here in uh, MT County Connect is also um, uh, part of uh, archive.org and uh, go back there. So anyway, the work we're doing here at the State Library and with your help is adding to this nonprofit library. Um, and um, so any feedback, any way you'd like to get involved would be most, most welcome and appreciated. With that, I'm just going to stop and open it up to questions you might have. Well, this is Joe, and I'll start. And I'm not seeing any questions, but give everybody a chance to get into the chat, or you can unmute your microphone. Yeah. I the these websites that you capture, you don't capture the entire website or just the main page of the website. How how deep does your capture go? Question, capturing a website, we only have a certain amount of, our data budget is at certain limits. So we can't capture everything within your website. We capture at least the home page and hopefully a couple levels down. Okay. And that said, we, um, the crawls will run for seven days and hopefully we get that content within seven days. If not, I can do a, special what they call patch crawl um, and also we have a, a very limited data budget so once it hits like 23 gigabytes on a particular crawl i gotta cut it off or else i won't have any data budget come you know with <laughs> that'll months. last through the year right yeah yeah exactly well, I think it's I think a lot of people would be surprised and interested to know that the these this level of government access to information. I mean, I think, I think a lot of people kind of believe that that once a government agency has changed information on their website, that that it's gone, you know, yeah. and that's that's not true. We actually you actually can see and find information um, because of the good work of people like you and other um, librarians who are busy gathering that information and archivists do it too but yeah. this is this is really good to know any um any questions for jim before i stop my recording because i like to maybe get a few questions for him that other people can view when they see the recording. Give it a minute. Well, hearing none, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the recording and then if anyone has but before I do that, I want to thank you, Jim, for your time and for giving that great tour and overview of um, what you do, the, the hard work that you do down at the State Library. Thanks. Thank you.